So several of you guys yesterday after a webinar were asking about when do I know something is a chorus or a verse and how to basically build out the main structure of a song. When I record a song or I'm starting to produce a song, I usually record and organize everything in a series of four, eight, or 16. So if you take four times two, that's eight. If you take eight, eight times two, that's 16, obviously, for those of you that can do math. And uh, that's basically how mainstream music is produced today. So start thinking about that as you're structuring out your song and arrangement view or creating new clips in session view. Uh, I encourage you using locators. Uh, just right click up here and you can rename that intro. Um, I can right click in the background grid and make this four bars. So now I can see in the background grid, this is four bars. So both of these together is eight. And then I could be like, all right, cool. So this next part after eight bars is gonna be my verse one. And this verse one's gonna go about 16 measures. Or maybe this is my pre-chorus. So let's just listen to it real quick. And we'll listen to the intro up to the verse. So that's what I would call all of my verse one. And then this next part, these next eight bars, um, I'm gonna kinda dip out and make the song a little bit quieter and start to build it back up into the chorus. So this is what I would call my pre-chorus. So I'll create a new locator and I'll call this my pre-chorus. If I can spell, there we go. And the pre-chorus is really just setting yourself back up into the main theme of the song. So the chorus is kind of that anthem, that's that memorable moment. Um, so let's kind of listen to the pre-chorus building up into that chorus. So that's the chorus, and I'll add a locator, call this my chorus. And then after that, after the chorus, uh, typically I would go back into the verse. So, so then it's just going to jump straight back into the verse. Uh, sometimes, rather than using verse 2, you might have like almost a post-chorus, or what you might call an interlude. Um, but for now, I'm just going to jump straight into the verse 2. Um, but I find that using sweeps is a really great way to transition. So finding yourself some good sweeps that just kind of swell up and down are great ways of transitioning. Notice that I did that in the pre-chorus. But basically as you're finding these pieces, once you define a intro, verse, chorus, verse two, then really you're just kind of repeating a lot of it and adding different flavors and finding different ways to transitioning. So like I mentioned, um, having sweeps uh, between especially bigger parts in the song like the chorus and the verses, using these sweeps is really helpful. So just a basic sweep, you can download them on Splice or there's a sample pack for our members. In the download section, you can download these. So that just kind of creates a nice little smooth, shimmery, pretty sound to make you feel good inside. Uh, you'll notice a lot of EDM artists do that and adding sweeps and effects to transition. So really, you're kind of done once you establish that verse and that pre-chorus and chorus. So, for example, for the second pre-chorus, I added a little bit of a new variation. I ended up taking the guitar. Rather than just repeating what I've already done earlier in the song with the guitar too, rather than repeating the first pre-chorus, I added a little bit of curveball. I 
went into the background and I just highlighted certain pieces and I started copying and pasting little snippets of the previous guitar audio. Um, there's a shortcut with Ableton 10. You can click on an audio clip and click R and it'll reverse that clip like that. So that's pretty cool. And so I just added some reversing swells with the second pre-chorus. With any song I produce, I kind of categorize everything into groups of instruments. So I would categorize this as my drums group. I put all my drums, my drum rack, my percussion and different effects and loops in there. And I group them. Here's my bass. So you can group your basses. Typically, I always just keep one like sub bass just to keep the bass really consistent throughout the song. Um, and I'll side chain, side chain that to the kick drum. We'll have more videos on that later. And then I'll have kind of my vocal chops or my main leads. So I have like my lead melodies. So that could be like a lead synth and your vocals and all those things. Um, and then I would have the synth in here that's also a lead instrument. Um, so really I got my drums, my bass, my leads. And then, uh, yeah, then you have kind of your effects after that. So that's kind of how I'd categorize everything that I produce with. So yeah, hopefully this helps give you guys an idea into my production process and organizing my songs as far as composition and stay tuned for more. You may have also noticed that there were some wave sounds in there and special effects. Uh, you can go to freesound.org and uh, you can find literally anything. Like if you want to find a really good burp sound, there's people that upload actual real audio of them burping or just ocean waves, which is what I had in my song, or just random effects of anything. People cheering, clapping, choirs, singing. Uh, it's a good way to find free sounds.